good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After the, such fantastic stories in five, I don't know how to follow, but um, I'm going to try to tell you about a change process that our humanitarian performance monitoring, which we lovingly call HPM, has gone through due to a health emergency, specifically the Ebola health emergency. So I'm going to start to give you some background about our HPM, then I'll tell you about how the HPM changed due to, to the Ebola crisis, and finally, I will tell you some of our future thoughts on how we're going to change and continue this change to improve our HPM to serve children better in such health emergencies. So as you know, UNICEF works in a variety of sectors. This includes health, nutrition, wash, child protection, education, HIV, AIDS, communications. And this has its own implications for our HPM, which we have to track indicators for all of these sectors that we intervene in. So the HPM was originally designed to provide real-time, high-frequency information on progress in a humanitarian setting identify and address implementation gaps, communication progress, and support advocacy and resource mobilization. But then the Ebola hit us. And I'm sure many of you are aware of the very different situation that that emergency put us in. We had a new strategy that was supported by ONMIR. And if you recall, that was the UN mission for Ebola emergency response, and the strategy was step. One, to stop the outbreak. Two, to treat the infected. Three, ensure essential services. And four, pre preserve stability. And five, prevent outbreaks in countries currently unaffected. So in line with this near strategy, we had to change our HPM. It was no longer the most malnourished children that we had to care for in these circumstances. As you can see from the pictures, the situation was totally different. We had to be in line with the STEP strategy. So our strategy became to stop the outbreak through actions at community level, to prepare for outbreaks in additional countries, and three, to contribute to maintaining or building back better the time primary health care system, and other relevant social systems. So our indicator framework had to totally change and support this new strategy for us to be able to deliver on the Ebola crisis. The adaptation and the change became a reality due to the vision of the UNICEF Ebola Global Emergency Coordinator, who at the time was Mr. Peter Salama, who led the response from New York, but had frequent visits to the countries to understand what do we have to do to overcome this emergency, this health emergency. I think the pictures that you are seeing remind you of the necessity for this change. Let me give you two examples of how we changed our indicators and the new indicator framework that we established to be able to respond to this emergency. So now we had to focus on building community care centers and community care centers that would be able to enhance disease prevention and control capabilities at the community level. So although this was never part of our HPM, this became now one of our main indicators in the HPM process. The global management of HPM is done through our New York Office of Emergency Programs. They use evaluations as an independent source of information that supported the change and helped prioritize the need to do this change. So we are now trying to determine how we will provide a different HPM framework for short-term versus protracted emergencies. Improving our HPM to track the quality of our interventions and adjusting it to monitor our accountability to affected populations and other indicators 
related to the grand bargain. So the HBM has now become a framework that countries may adapt and use to best fit the emergency that they are facing. I'm sure you are aware that this will have a lot of challenges for us, but I am sure with interaction with the community, looking at our after action reviews, getting feedback from our um, countries and colleagues and partners like you, we will be able to adapt the HPM to serve, best serve children in need. Thank you very much. We all know that anticipation is absolutely critical given the changing landscape of humanitarian crises. And if we are to meet the needs of affected communities as they present, this is absolutely centerpiece. However, the commitment to and the rate of change um, that I see in how we function across the organization through the START Network doesn't really reflect the importance of anticipation. But calling out the Saudis and their backers posed particular risks to our programs and to our colleagues on the coal face. And there were also funding considerations. And I was involved in many, many difficult conversations as to whether Oxfam could really afford to take on this level of risk. 